everybody. My name is Joel Butterly. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Ingenious Prep. Um, I attended Dartmouth College and then went to uh, Yale Law School. Um, Yale Law School is a little bit different from other law schools. It does have a little bit more of a kind of academic bent. Um, that's a bit of a stereotype, but I do think that it pans out as true um, when you look at the people who are accepted and their backgrounds. So in terms of what you need to do to get into Yale Law School, you know, as opposed to other top law schools like Harvard, Columbia, NYU, I think probably the first one is they look for people who have serious academic interests, serious intellectual pursuits. Um, so academic publications, research assistant work with professors, particularly professors in, um, in the legal field or in a related field, um, can be extremely valuable. They care a great deal about the GPA. They probably care less about the LSAT than other comparable law schools. Um, so one thing that I saw, we actually did a data, uh, a data analysis of admitted students over a couple of periods, a couple of years um, for Harvard, Stanford, and, and Yale law schools. And one of the things that, that was interesting about Yale was that what we found is that it was more common to have a student with a really, really high GPA and a low LSAT score than it was at some of the other schools. Um, and I think in part that's because they place a higher emphasis on sort of academic achievement and academic accomplishments. Um, so um, generally speaking, a higher LSAT is better. Um, if you have an LSAT over 170, you're definitely still in the running. Um, I had plenty of friends who had a really, really strong undergraduate GPA, slightly weaker LSAT scores, you know, the, the 170, 171, um, which is still extremely good, um, but um, not as high as you might expect for somebody getting into the number one law school, um, but who nonetheless got in and had themselves very serious intellectual and academic pursuits. So high GPA, um, serious intellectual or academic pursuits. Um, I would say Yale does have a preference for older applicants. Um, I think that the, when I was there, um, the median age was something like 27 or 28. Um, so I was one of the youngest students in my year um, at YLS. Um, I think that they do tend to prefer people who have some life experience and some work experience. So if you're thinking about taking a couple gap years to work or do something interesting, do it, um, it'll, it'll pay off. Um, and then I think one other kind of little tidbit that, I, that I've noticed is we, we, did, we, we looked at like a, a several hundred um, of the Yale 250 essays. It's a very short essay, 250 words long, that you have to write for Yale Law School. It's, it's like notoriously difficult to write something meaningful in that, that amount of space. Um, and what we found is that the people who got in overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly wrote about an intellectual hobby or passion. Um, so learning a new language or playing chess or debate in public speaking. Um, and the unsuccessful ones were often things that were a little bit more pragmatic. Um, I think in part that's because at Yale, a lot of the admissions is done through the professors. And so, you know, you basically have to play to that audience. Um, whereas at other schools, you're basically being evaluated by professional admissions officers rather than by the, prof the pro uh, professorial staff. Um, so that's sort of the peculiarities of Yale. Uh, wish you the best of luck, and uh, if you have any questions, please reach out.